Hi friends, welcome back to another video on ThriveX Drive. Here we discuss everything about self-development, how to help yourself get out of a rut, get rid of unwanted habits, and even addictions. Now there's literally thousands upon millions of those self-help, self-growth videos online on YouTube. And you might think, why me? And I think everyone's experience is different. You might just find my story to be a little more resonate than someone else. And that is all enough for me to share my transformational experience. Now, has anyone tell you that you might have a problem, you might have some conditions that your family members, your friends, or even uh, health professionals that tell you that they will never get better and you're gonna have them for the rest of your life. And I had that. And the moment that I accept the condition, it actually got worse. It got a lot worse. And I actually went to more hospital. I went to, I faced more hospital bills and more medicines. Now this leads to the first book I wanna mention is How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World by Harry Brown. He talked about three sections on those traps and that trap is usually assumption that wildly held by people and then usually that's not true if you really dig deep it's not true and then the third one is that it inhibited your freedom to be yourself and by accepting that trap you actually become someone that people think you are not not you so this is his original words from his book he said world thinks you should be something other than what you are you must be the kind of person that other people expect of you. Although he talked majority of that book on career and jobs that you choose, your life you wanna be, but this exactly apply to the mental health world as well. Because a lot of time when we having a title of a condition, a diagnose, and we suddenly putting ourselves in that box or other people putting us in that box. And I was in that situation when I, you know, having a new project, I got excited, and the people around me start thinking, whoa, is that she's going great, great? And then when you feel a little low in life, or maybe just that couple of days every month, you know, as a girl, and you feel a little low in energy, and people around you start concerning, like, well, are you okay? Are you sad? Are you depressed? So instead of doing something like self-care related and really getting out the rug, by going for a walk. I noticing that everyone else empathy kind of put me down into a deeper depression. And because I start doubting myself whether or not I did have depression and the behavior, the action, even the posture itself started resonate with these symptoms. Because I feel like I had to match with these actions that they think a depressed person should have. And it only led to more cycling and moods and really more medications. So at one point I thought, I can't let this go on. Because when I see my husband coming home and every single day worry about today, what Amy gonna be like? Is she gonna be happy or sad? Or is that she gonna be in danger, in crisis? And seeing him to be stressed and putting his health into jeopardy, I just really don't want to be that selfish person. So I decided looking at more self-help books and the watching videos and listen to podcasts. And here are these four people, their ideas, their books that really changed my life and make me become right now this person who's really bright every single day and full of joy. And I really appreciate and feel gratitude every single day. And I'm no longer taking any medications. Of course, you know, disclaimer, you always wanna to talk to a doctor about taking off any medications. So first book is James Clear's Atomic Habits. I know many of you guys might already heard it or might already read it, but this is the first book that had come across to me that really shifted my mindset. It was one of the podcasts I listened to that he mentioned the key idea of his book. The change of your identity is what make your habit to stick or make you break certain addictions or habits. So every action you take that are the votes for your belief, which is your identity. For example, if you want to be a reader, if you think yourself as a reader, you're more likely to read every single day. 
and just like me as a musician, because I and identify myself as a musician, as a violinist, so I will practicing every single day for the project, for the performance that I am preparing for. So habits are votes. They are evidence shape your identity. This is eye opening for me because back in 2018, when I relapsed in my eating disorder, I really thought there was a hard time for me to get out of it. It was also because my identity to put me in that relapse. And if I think myself as a person without that problem, without these illnesses, and actually I have the action to be a more healthy person, healthy eater, and who doesn't really care much about how much I weighed. So this leads to the second person, Bob Proctor. So he has two of the books I will recommend. One is Thoughts Are Things, Turning Your Ideas Into Realities. And the other one is The Art of Living. They both have a common ideology as the breaking old self-image and shifting your paradigm to a winner image by using subconscious mind. It's very similar to what James Clear was talking about, the identity-based habits, as you have the new image of yourself, who you want to be, and your action will align with this image, which is your new identity. And that leads to the new result. And what's most important is that the choice and the, the action we make is going to either add positive energies or vibrations or creating the negative vibrations. And that is why sometimes when we study more and we have more knowledge, we feel more competent and we feel good about ourselves. In my case, overcome those old self images as a person who likes to pinch her belly and really fixated on the number on the scales and sometimes feel less of herself and always pleasing others. And those old self image gradually disappeared as I started practicing more and more into programming my subconscious mind. And this leads to the next most important person I wanna mention is Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's one of the leading neuroscientists on this topic and he's also a very prolific writer and he wrote Breaking the Habits of Being Yourself and the You Are the Perceival, Making Your Mind Matter. So here's a quote from his book. If you are not being defined by a vision of the future, then all you are left with are memories of the past. Our brain is so much more powerful than we think it might be. Now there's a lot of brain waves going on, activities going on in our brain every single second. And you can find his crash course on understanding the brain waves in the description. And but I just wanna briefly explain it a little bit. So for our brain waves, usually when you go to a deep sleep, that's actually a delta state. He believes that the most powerful that time to reprogramming your brain is when you're in a theta state, which is a dreaming state. You're about to go to a deep sleep, but you're like in a REM. He also mentioned gamma, the super consciousness. So the energy sits in the lower center and begin to move up and he called it brain orgasm. It releases to the brain through the thalamic gate and it begin to move into our pineal gland. The pineal gland is sensitive to pressure. It fills the pressure and it compresses and releases electromagnetic energy. The pineal gland begins to take melatonin and it turns into some very profound neurotransmitters. So he has measured that those amplitudes of energy up to 26,000 or even 40,000 times more than the normal brain. The release of our neurotransmitter activated the nerve system and you are turning into the possibility. The brain is processing the greater stream of consciousness. That moment what you experience in the inner world is more real than the outer world. He called it nowhere, no space, no time. And that's when the time passes so fast and without you realizing it. And that's also the time that the brain is produces new chemicals and your body can move out of the past. If you watch this far into this video, please give a like button. And if you're interested now, that means you're in a beta wave. If you think some of my information that is very interesting to learn, then you're actually in an alpha state. 
many of us actually are in the high level of beta, which is a lot of stress, anxiety, and uh, there's not a lot of trust in there. And sometimes we make decisions, we make actions that we regret later. That's why I think it's important for us to meditate daily and really going into that theta state. As I went on to do longer meditations and I really get into that state of pure consciousness as what Dr. Joe Dispenza was saying, no time, no space, and nowhere. And I started really feeling that my brain was rewiring. And that's when I also come across this book, the fourth one, which is Joseph Murphy's The Power of the Subconscious Mind. As he mentioned in the book, that the symptoms of almost any disease can be induced in you by hypnotic suggestion. And also remind yourself frequently that the healing power is in your subconscious mind too. When I went on with my meditation, I started to implementing about five minutes self-affirmation towards the end. He constantly mentioned this word, faith. So it doesn't matter if you are Catholic or Christian or you're just like me that really believe the energy of the universe. He thinks that if you have the faith in things that you desire and use the subconscious programming to change it, and as long as you believe that you will be changed and the transformation will happen. Believe and trust is crucial in brain programming. Our circles of neurons are firing together every single second with new ideas, new thoughts, and new skills that we learn. As a music teacher, I always talk about muscle memories. As we practice in a slow but precise manner, you can get to the result faster because the neuron is not confused by different firing circuits. Same as reprogramming our habits and our identity. And I was definitely having an identity crisis and there was a lot of incompetence and self-doubt. So by really doing all this work and reading all these books, I really started changing the way that I think about myself. I hope any of these thoughts and experience I had can help you in a certain way. There's by no means that I'm perfect. I still wanted to improve a lot of my bad behaviors and habits. That's why I plan out a lot of new challenge videos that are coming soon. So if you guys think this is helpful, please hit the like button and please comment down below what you want to see in the future videos on this channel. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell icon. And I'll see you guys next time. Holidays. And the other one, the other one, where's the other one?